it seems like they never left us. They're still here with us. At a handful of Washington, D.C. public schools, touched by the terror of 9-11, symbols of admiration and affection, of loss and legacy, remain vibrant and purposeful. You know, the next morning, my supervisor called me and told me that that was their plane that went into the Pentagon. And uh, I mean, I, I was just devastated. 20 years ago, three teachers and three students from DC schools were heading to a National Geographic conference in California when their plane, Flight 77, hit the Pentagon. Retired teacher Estella Cleveland worked at Lecky Elementary School in Southwest DC for nearly a quarter century. Many of those years, beside her best friend, fellow teacher Hilda Taylor. I loved her and she loved me and we loved working together and therefore I decided to find a frame that would suit her personality and for me to remember her forever. Taylor and student Bernard Brown, student Asia Cottam and teacher Sarah Clark from Bertie Backus Middle School and teacher James Debunair and student Rodney Dickens from Ketchum Elementary, all perished together on 9-11. All six honored with a banner near the front entrance of Leckie Elementary. Other memorials at Leckie for Taylor and Brown include this stunning stained glass piece at the end of a hallway and gardens outside. I suggested take Bernard. And she said, oh, I like him. I said, I know you will, you know, you'll have fun. And I'm sure she didn't regret taking Bernard with her. They're together in heaven. We call it the 9-11 room that was uh, dedicated to Rodney Dickens and Mr. James Debonair. Ketchum Elementary School employee Morris Cobb Jr. comes to this quiet space of reflection often to remember Debonair a co-worker he considered a confidant. And uh, the world has lost two very special people. That's, a, that's, that's the way I feel about it. And for only the second time in two decades, Debunair's daughter Jalen entered the 9-11 room at Ketchum for this interview. Sometimes you do have your moments. And it's expected, and, and within myself, I know that it's okay sometimes to be sad. As the years rolled by, Jalen Debunair found a way to rediscover and rebuild her strength. Someone will see this and say, wow, I feel exactly how she felt, but I see how she is 20 years later. There's hope for me. Inspired by her father's legacy of learning, she's now a motivational speaker, sharing her story of healing so others facing any form of darkness can know that their light will one day shine. And I learned at a very young age that sometimes you are thrown curveballs and the choice that you make at that particular moment can affect you for the rest of your life. I chose happiness. Outside Ketchum, a tree planted years ago continues to flourish. A place where Jalen and her daughter can now find shade while seeing and spreading the light of this school's two fallen angels. I'm Jay Korf for 7 News.